Hi, this is Misha. And just kind of felt like revisiting and kind of comparing two guns here. In fact, this is one of our earliest CNR type videos a few years ago, but these have appeared in a few others comparing with other guns and things. This is the Czechoslovakian VZ-52 rifle, chambered for 7.62 by 45 millimeter. This is a semi-automatic or self-loading rifle. And also on the table, we have a very related gun. This is the Czechoslovakian VZ-52-57 self-loading rifle, chambered for 7.62 by 39. And these guns have a very neat and interesting history Czechoslovakia was was good for that. They they really gave um, gave the Comblock some uh, kind of variety. What they did following World War II, Czechoslovakia quickly un fell under the influence of communism by 1947 through 1948, and so they fell in line with the uh, Soviet bloc, what would become the Warsaw Pact. Well, after the war, their military had been issued a, a large range of guns from um, old German uh, K-43 self-loading rifles, as well as plenty of leftover VZ-24s and K-98s, and then eventually the 9130 Mosin would come in. But Czechoslovakia had had a very thriving private small arms industry since the 1920s, and so continued to develop guns. This is where the VZ-52 pistol, amongst many others, came from. The VZ-52 rifle began in the late 40s. In fact, it was the same brothers that designed the 52 pistol that initially designed it, this rifle. And the initial prototype was known as the CZ-4903. For 1949 is when it appeared. The, this would fire the new cartridge, 7.62 by 45, which was unique to CZ in Czechoslovakia. It was based on the German 7.92 by 33, 8mm curves, but it was improved for better ballistics, better range, better accuracy. So a slimmer bullet and a longer one. Well, this prototype would lead into the CZ-52 and by that I mean 502, 50.2502. And this would eventually be refined into this gun here. It was adopted in 1952 as the Czech words that I'm not even going to try to say on camera. 52, 1952. A lot of people mistake this for an SKS, and it's anything but, aside from the fact that it essentially filled the same role. But Czechoslovakia would never go to an SKS variant. They would do their own thing. What we have, starting at the barrel, we have a 20.5 inch barrel. It is not chrome lined. It is threaded for a blank fire device and theoretically other devices like a grenade launcher could go on too. There should be a front side hood, but this one's missing it. We have a pretty unique, although not terribly useful, bayonet that folds to the side, as you see, and deploys out. It's a very thin blade. It is lightweight, I'll give them that. Come on, fold back. There we go. Full length stock. A few different types of wood were used over time, including walnut beech and I believe birch. The gas system is very interesting. To get to it, all you have to do is remove this upper handguard here. Whoosh. You can see the top of the barrel and the gas piston is here. It is of course a gas port. It pushes on this, which in turn acts on the carrier. And the bolt itself is interesting. It is a tilting or tipping bolt, but it locks in the front, not in the rear as most other guns. So it's a pretty unique barrel and bolt system because your op rod, your pistons around your barrel, 
and uh, your bolt kind of is reverse. It is a reciprocating charging handle. It is stripper clip fed primarily. It does, as you see, have a last round hold back, and that is part of the device, unless the mag is worn. No, that still holds, so that's good. It feeds from 10 round detaching mags. The trigger group is very M1 Grand. It has a safety very similar to a Grand. It also has a folding trigger guard and it comes out of its stock, quite similar to a Grand. It's a very wide trigger as well. We have a semi pistol grip, metal cupped butt plate, and this can be pulled off. Usually you need a bullet tip. Yeah, this one's tight. I'm not gonna mess with it. Ah, oh, there it goes. Pull that off here to reveal a storage compartment for cleaning gear. It has what people consider an inner and an outer butt plate. Kind of interesting. It just has a, well, if I do it right. But yeah, it stores its cleaning kit like a grand would in there. There we go. It kind of just locks on. Again, if your video guy does it right, come on. Or gets it stuck. I've actually never done that never done that before but hey it's fun right there's a little nub on the bottom here it kind of hooks into and then rides up here and then latches like that there you go <clears throat> has a side mounted sling a few different styles were used over the years this is the cotton one very similar if not exactly the same as used on the later VZ 58 we're just under 40 inches tip to tip, about 39 and a half. And we weigh about nine and a half pounds. So not especially light, but it has a good balance. And finally, we have just a typical sliding ladder rear sight. Pretty typical gun. Now, these had detaching mags, but they were only usually issued with two, one in the gun, and then one in a belt pouch like this. That was it. Mostly we were supposed to use stripper clips and the ammo was provided on stripper clips. And early on these would have a grayish phosphate finish. These would go into production primarily at CZ, what we know today as CZ, using the code SHE. They would also be produced in smaller numbers at factories using the code AIM and RID. Production would begin in 52 and would last until 56 to 57, depending on which source you go to. This one here was produced in 1954 by CZ. The gun had a lot of positive aspects. It was reliable. It had good range and accuracy. The 7.62 by 45 cartridge was very good, honestly. Czechoslovakia would also make a light machine gun, the VZ-52 LMG, that would fire it. And these would be reasonably popular, and Czechoslovakia would not only issue it to their own units, but also would export. In fact, Cuba would adopt the VZ-52 as standard issue early on after Castro took over, and these would appear in many places around the world, including hot spots where communist revolutionaries, Contras and all that from uh, South America, Africa, Middle East, and uh, East Asia. They would produce about 150,000 of these, so not bad for about a five year production run. Unfortunately, it couldn't last, and this gun came onto the scene. The VZ-5257 is basically politics. It's the same gun, essentially, but rechambered for 762 by 39 Now, Czechoslovakia didn't do this because 762 by 39 is a better round. It is, in fact, not. It has less range, not as great of accuracy, 
and they did not find these guns to be as reliable as the original guns, which isn't surprising. Usually a gun, when it's chambered for a cartridge, is, is best used with that. But the Soviets pitched a fit because Czechoslovakia was really not conforming and they put the boot down and that's where the new chambering came from. Now there are rumors that persist to this very day that some VZ-52s were rebarreled or rechambered for X-39. This is not true. The VZ-52-57 guns were all purpose built primarily if not exclusively at CZ. And these would be produced from 57 to through about 59 when the VZ-58 assault rifle was coming online. But since they had to rework the gun, redo the gun for the cartridge, they did take the opportunity to make a few upgrades. For one, to make manufacturing a little faster and easier, they went to the new method of pinning the barrel, actually, yeah, pinning, basically press and pinning, you know, AKM style, as opposed to screwing the barrel in. See the hole there. They also started chrome lining the bores for obvious reasons. And they would go to a new kind of paint or lacquer finish. And some older VZ-52s would get this finish during refurbishment. So it's not exclusive to the 57, but it's predominant and came in. One other change, they went to a new pattern of magazine. It's very similar. I like to keep mine in these Mosin and the Gaunt pouches. They fit very well. There you go. Here is a mag. You notice it's different on the bottom compared with this one here. Notice this is straight and then it has an upturn here. That's for the X45 cartridge. This is just a more or less straight angle for the fatter and shorter X39 rounds. So they did go to new mags. Uh, the original mags would work okay and would feed okay, but not great. So the Czechs were pretty good at making guns and wanted to do things right. And even though this gun was kind of foist upon them by the Soviets, they didn't half-ass it. But like I said, it wasn't as reliable. And this gun, while it was very good for its day and time, you have to remember when it was developed in the late 40s, there weren't that many self-loading rifles. It wasn't perfect. And it quickly, like many guns of its era, became obsolete as so-called assault rifles and battle rifles came online. It was complicated to field strip. Like the Grand, you had to take it out of its stock, which could have some problems. And really, it was kind of heavy. wasn't necessarily long, but it was kind of heavy. And so it wasn't a perfect gun. It had issues, but it, none of them were insurmountable. One thing I don't like is disassembling this up here. When you take the dust cover off, the top cover off, the spring is very long and very skinny, and it's just a bear to get in there right. I've also seen some broken firing pin issues, things like that, over time. So quickly, both the VZ-52 and 5257 were phased out of frontline service in Czechoslovakia and were essentially sold off. They would make about 100,000 of these and like I said, 150,000 of the first pattern, so about a quarter million. And obviously after they didn't need these anymore, they kept a few around for like guard rifles. They would even chrome some. Others would be given to police. This has the later nylon sling, by the way but many were given away and that's why so many appeared in Granada when America invaded in the early 80s. In fact, a lot of them like this were vet bringbacks. Interesting side note, Granada was pretty much the last time soldiers were just allowed to bring guns home, you know, at least officially. After that, the military really didn't allow it even for self-loading rifles that never were full auto like this. And again, Cuba would continue to use them. So a few came home in the 80s, a few maybe came back from Vietnam because they did appear over in Vietnam, but the majority of VZ-52s in America were imported by Century Arms later on and were in relatively rough shape if they came out of, say, South America, like a lot of them did. 
In fact, some of them have that truck bed liner stock on them, which was Century's kind of half-assed attempt to uh, may improve the stock. So you can find some of these, plus the bores weren't chromed, so 762.45 was very corrosive, and so a lot of the bores were sewer pipes. So if you find one of those, yeah. Plus finding ammo, no one really makes it. If they do, it's a boutique item. Extra mags are quite expensive now. The guns themselves are relatively cheap, though, considering, you know, the weird ammo and spare parts aren't that available. So, you see that, and several thousand came in via Century and a couple of other importers of the 52. But the 5257, there's only, well, fewer than a thousand officially imported. I think 700 is the number often tossed around, but I can't verify that. And you don't you just don't see them and they're obviously more popular because they actually fire around you can get so just wanted to show it these are fun guns to shoot very enjoyable and a neat part of Czech history well if you haven't check out our other hit <laughs> check playlist for other Czech guns we tend to like them around here. If you have any questions or want to share stories of your own VZ52 or 5257, we'd love to hear them in the comments. As always, please click like, and if you could, check out the link to our Patreon page. Nice triggers. This is Misha, and we will catch you next time.